these landscapes, he began to correspond with a man named George Beck, a geology professor at Central Washington University in Ellensburg. Beck had begun exploring significant Miocene fossil sites in the Columbia Basin in 1925, and he was also a classical violinist who displayed the kind of artist sensibility that appealed to Weir. In 1934, Beck had published the first major paper about a petrified forest exposed above the Columbia River crossing at Vantage. Over the next several years, he played a key role in establishing Ginkgo Petrified Forest State Park, which interpreted the 15 million year old environment for the general public. Weir counted Beck as an important mentor and joined him for gigs at Ginkgo and at various other Miocene sites in Yakima Canyon. Weir also continued his artistic pursuits, experimenting with melted crayons to produce effects that could be compared to the way hot magma metamorphoses geologic strata. He made friends with a young Seattle artist named Joseph Goldberg, who was advancing his own encaustic techniques. They were both interested in beautiful stones and together made several visits to Eastern Washington and Oregon, not digging for fossils, but studying the landscape and stopping at rock shops in search of high-grade agates and thunder eggs. The pair would line up all the moss agates in whatever new store they came across, then study the green chrome and rusty iron filigree traced across milk quartz fields to judge which one was aesthetically best. It was clear to Joe Goldberg that Weir had a very pure eye for both art and agates, and he was bitterly disappointed when West began spending less time melting crayons and more time swinging a rock hammer. West himself did not see such a clear distinction between art and science. His correspondence with professional paleobotanists carried the same fervor that he applied to his artistic friends, and his sharp eye for detail served him well in his outdoor avocation. In 1976, the University of Washington's Burke Museum named West an affiliate curator of paleobotany, a very unusual naming for an amateur. The post came without a salary, but it did provide West with a small office space in a basement broom closet and gained him access to the Burke's extensive collections and network of researchers. Several of those associates recognized the quality of Weir's work and always seemed to come up with funds for proposed field trips. At the same time, Weir continued to pursue art just as avidly as he did the natural history world. In 1985, he dropped by Spokane's Cheney Cowles Museum, now the MAC, to pitch an exhibit on the work of Helmi Jovenin one of his many West Side art friends. The curator there was named Beth Sellers, and she was had a favorable response to West's pitch. Weir accepted an, office, an offer of modest funds for travel and loan arrangements and started to put an exhibit together. Helmy passed away while it was happening, but West pressed on with the project, procuring all the items for the exhibit. At the opening, he gave a talk to patrons, and when the exhibit closed, he arranged permanent donations of several of the artist's pieces to the museum. Although Mark Toby, the acknowledged flag bearer of the Northwest School of Art, had died in Switzerland a decade previously, Weir then told Beth Sellers that over the years he had presented Toby with numerous rocks, fossils, and crystals that had influenced the master's art. Even now, he suggested, he had access to enough Toby material to mount a second exhibit. Sellers bought in again, and in 1988, Wes arranged for loans of several of Toby's minerals and personal effects at, that were archived at the Burt Museum, then called on other private collectors to supply a variety of original graphic art for the exhibit. He and Sellers juxtaposed these framed pieces with the Burke artifacts set in clear vitrine boxes in order to highlight their impact on Toby's thinking. The artifacts include many of Weir's personal favorites from moss agates to fossil ocean shells. One ancient genus of water fern, Azola, hailed from the Republic quarries in the Okanagan Highlands. 
Azola's leafy stems were etched black on buff-colored mudstone slabs that dated back to the Eocene, 50 million years before the show, and somehow seemed to capture the best of Toby's intentions. When the show closed, Weir funneled several permanent donations of work by Toby, an associated Northwest school artist, to the museum's budding collection. A couple of them had been created by Weir himself, whose own position in the Seattle art scene was based on his small land and seascapes. But as a second signature child style, Weir executed black spidery figures that reminded some people of dendrites, those branching mineral stains that seep to life inside layers of stone. In keeping with Weir's preferred scale, these creatures were the size of postcards. In 1991, Beth Sellers and the Spokane Museum premiered another exhibit called Environmental Solitude, which jointly displayed works by Wes Weir and the encaustic ace Joseph Goldberg. At the opening, a reporter described Weir as dressed like an academic, shy to the point of stammering, yet eager to talk about both art and paleobotany. Standing alone in a corner, but cajoling anyone who entered his orbit to inscribe their contact information into his well-worn address book, Wes always said that he'd like to stay in touch. In an interview, Weir played down his own artwork to focus on fossil projects he was involved in the Okanagan Highlands, around Republic and Princeton, British Columbia, just north of here. Ancient leaf imprints there had attracted the attention of an eminent British paleobotanist who by chance was on hand to attend the exhibit premiere. The interesting thing for me tonight is that my life is divided between paleontology and painting, and that's a very good life, Weir said. Have a painting showing, take off tomorrow for a field trip. Even as Weir was participating in exhibits at the Spokane Museum during the 18, 1980s and 90s, he was running back and forth between a host of isolated fossil sites.